Cheap stocks are what I am always on the hunt for. Sure, I am a buy and hold investor, but I need to like the company, like the outlook, and also like the valuation before investing in a stock. I don't just blatantly invest in a company just because I like them. Think of it when it comes to real estate. You could fall in love with a house that you want to buy, but the asking price is way over what market value is. Looking at comparable houses around the neighborhood that are exactly the same, why is this house priced that much higher? You have one of two options. You could submit an offer that is well below their market value, or you can wait for that price to come down. The same holds true with stocks. There's many different stocks on the market today that I really like, but I'm holding off because of valuation concerns. After all, price is what you pay, value is what you get. And in today's video, we are going to look at three cheap dividend stocks that look worthy of a buy. But before we jump into it, do me a huge favor and click that like button down below as that greatly helps out the channel and I truly appreciate it. With that being said, let's get started. Hey everyone, Mark Rusin here, back for another video. As always, I am a CPA and not a financial advisor, so please perform your due diligence before investing in any stock mentioned in today's video. The word cheap can often be misunderstood. It can number one, think of something like poor quality, or it can be something that is of great value and higher quality. That is exactly what we're gonna look at today. These three stocks that we're gonna look at are of high quality, but they're trading at low valuations. Cheap dividend stock number one is Union Pacific, stock ticker UNP. Union Pacific Corporation is one of the largest railroad companies in the United States, providing transportation services for freight, agriculture products, coal, and industrial goods. The company operates a network of more than 32,000 miles of track in 23 states in the western two-thirds of the United States. The company is more than 160 years old. Union Pacific has a market cap of roughly $127 billion. As you can see on the chart, the stock has been on a downtrend since reaching its all-time high of $279 roughly a year ago in March 2022. Over the past year, shares are down 15% and they are down 25% from their peak levels. However, even with the rough patch the stock has endured lately, shares of UNP have still outperformed the S&P 500 over the past decade, with a total return of roughly 275%, compared to the S&P 500 having a total return of 215% over that same time span. So what happened to the company? The company recently reported Q4 earnings that missed on both the top and bottom lines. Q4 EPS was $2.67 per share, which missed by $0.11 cents per share, and revenue generated during the quarter was $6.2 billion, barely missing analyst expectations by $60 million. EPS was flat year-over-year year due to higher fuel costs combined with poor weather and weakening demand during the period. Looking ahead to 2023, the company sees many economic challenges that will be headwinds for the company at least through the first half. That includes the industrial, housing, and import sector, all expected to decline in 2023 before returning to growth in 2024. In terms of capital allocation, Union Pacific expects to spend less than 15% of revenues with a capital plan of $3.6 billion. For the dividend, UNP has a long-term dividend payout ratio goal of 45% of earnings. That is exactly where they're at right now. And then lastly, they expect to continue buying back shares in bulk. Speaking of the dividend, Union Pacific pays a $5.20 per share dividend, one that they have been growing for 16 consecutive years. They have paid out a dividend since 1899. Over the past five years, the company has increased the dividend at a combined annual growth rate of 14.3%. Analysts are looking for 2023 adjusted EPS of 1166 per share in 2023 and 1280 per share in 2024. So low single digit growth in 2023 before returning to double digit growth in 2024. On a forward looking basis, shares of Union Pacific currently trade at 17.8 times, which is well below the company's five year average of 21.7 times and also below their 10 year average of 20 times. The last time the multiple was this low was during October 22 lows that we saw recently, and before that, April of 2020. Both great times to add to the stock. 
Finding high quality cash flowing businesses are so important right now. After all, 2023 is shaping up to be what economists call the year of lost wealth. The economic data, especially for the consumer, is weakening, which does not bode well for the back half of the year. There is a recession on the horizon, it seems, and things will only get worse as the Fed is trying to break the labor market in order to attack inflation. So where do we put our money, you might ask? The traditional 60-40 portfolio just had one of the worst performances on record in 2022. But if you look at hedge fund managers or high net worth individuals, they are putting money into assets not correlated with the stock market. Now they are not putting all of those assets, they are still investing in the stock market, but also building up other portfolios. And one of those assets with the lowest correlation to the stock market is art. That is right, contemporary art has even outpaced the S&P 500 total return over the past 26 years by more than 125%. Art can be a difficult market to get into, but that brings us to today's sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks is a platform that lets you invest in multi-million dollar paintings without breaking the bank. The company has seen over 650,000 investors seek to gain access to their platform, and as such, they have created a long waitlist. However, you can bypass that waitlist by using my special link down in the description below. That will give you access, VIP access on their latest offerings, and you will be able to bypass that waitlist. So skip the waitlist today and check out Masterworks. The second cheap dividend stock on our list today is Lowe's Companies, stock ticker LOW. I've done a couple of different videos covering Lowe's as they have been a very shareholder friendly company over the years and they continue to do so as they continue to close the gap on their rival Home Depot. These two own the home improvement retail space making up a duopoly. Currently Lowe's has a market cap of $124.4 billion. I was waiting to do this video until after Lowe's reported their Q4 results because number one, if the stock fell, I wanted to look at the results first. And number two, I knew if it did fall, it would be a great fit for this video. As you recall, we are looking for great businesses at great prices. And as you can see, Lowe's shares fell 5.5% after reporting earnings today, making the valuation that much more intriguing. Before we get into earnings, let's see where Lowe's has been over the past year. Shares have fallen 12% and they are down 18.5% from their 52-week high. Over the past decade, Lowe's has crushed the S&P 500, providing a total return of 541% as compared to the S&P 500's 215% total return. So over 2x that return. So what happened with Lowe's? Lowe's reported mixed earnings, which saw them miss by $310 million on the top line or revenues, and they beat with EPS by 0.07 cents on the bottom line. Comparable store sales fell by 1.5%, something we saw over at Home Depot as well. Gross margins also fell by 60 basis points to 32.3%. When it comes to home improvement stores, both Home Depot and Lowe's, there are two types of customers. There's your do-it-yourself customers and there's pro customers. For years, Home Depot has dominated the pro customer and also likewise, Lowe's has dominated the DIY customers. But since CEO Marvin Ellison, who used to work at Home Depot in a senior, senior leadership role, he has cut into the gap of that pro customer. And as we saw in the latest quarter, the thing that stood out to me was that the 10% growth we saw from the pro sales with Lowe's, which essentially means they took further market share from Home Depot in this area. On the year, the pro segment has increased 16% overall. Online sales also increased 5%, which was another big focus for the company. The number of transactions were down 5.5%, and the average ticket price of $100.71 was up 4.8%, primarily due to inflation. As I mentioned at the start, Lowe's has always been very generous when it comes to returning money to shareholders. On the year, Lowe's returned $16.5 billion through both dividends and share buybacks. In terms of the dividend, Lowe's currently pays an annual dividend of $4.20 per share, which equates to a dividend yield of 2.2% following today's sell-off. Lowe's is also a dividend king as they have increased their dividend for 61 consecutive years. In addition, they have been strong in terms of dividend growth as well, having a five-year dividend growth rate of 20.7%. 
in terms of valuation, let's look at just how cheap low stock is now following this earnings sell-off. In the company's earnings release, they stated they expect 2023 EPS to come in at a midpoint of $13.80 per share. Using that midpoint, shares are currently trading at 14 times, well below that of the S&P 500. Over the past five years, shares of Lowe's have traded closer to 19.2 times, and over the past decade, closer to 20.2 times. So as you can see, Lowe's is extremely cheap at these levels for those willing to wait it out. A slower US economy and a housing sector will weigh on the stock, but higher mortgage rates could also keep more homeowners in their current homes, which could lead to further home improvement projects. And as we saw, Lowe's is the go-to for more DIY customers. The third and final cheap dividend stock on our list today happens to be a REIT, and that is Federal Realty Investment Trust, stock ticker FRT. Federal Realty happens to be the only REIT on the prestigious dividend kings list, and they're only one of three REITs that are on the dividend aristocrat list. This speaks to the quality of the company's portfolio and the efficiency to generate cash flows year in and year out. The REIT has 103 properties, which include roughly 3,300 commercial tenants, roughly 26 million square feet, and over 3,000 residential units. Looking at the map above, you can see that their properties are mostly coastal states, which tend to be more populated and can have higher income. FRT recently reported their Q4 and full year 2022 earnings results, which saw the company generate funds from operations, or FFO, of $6.32 per share, a 13.5% increase year over year. On a gap basis, the company saw comparable property operating income increase 7.7% year over year and 10.8% when you exclude one-time term fees and prior period rents, which is very encouraging. Not only is the portfolio diversified geographically, but they also are well diversified in terms of tenants. No single tenant accounts for more than 2.8% of annual base rent. The largest tenant is discount retailer TJX Companies, stock ticker TJX, which we recently saw report strong Q4 earnings. Also, only seven tenants have more than 1% exposure, so no real single tenant risk exposure when it comes to FRT. Diving a little deeper into the portfolio, you can see how the portfolio is diversified among tenant type as well as category. Anchor retail properties account for roughly 35% of annual base rent, followed by national regional shopping centers accounting for 18%. Grocery pharmacy is the largest category accounting for 10% of ABR. FRT also has a strong triple B plus rated balance sheet with $1.3 billion in total liquidity. And management stated that they expect free cash flow to return to pre-pandemic levels in 2023. As I stated at the start, FRT is the only REIT on the prestigious dividend kings list, as they have increased their dividend for 55 consecutive years. And they have generated a 7% CAGR over that period. The dividend yield currently sits at 3.9%. FRT is expected to see slowing growth in 2023 before returning to high single-digit AFFO growth moving forward. Given that, shares of FRT currently trade at 22 times current year AFFO estimates and 20 times 2024 estimates. Over the past five years, for comparable purposes, shares of FRT have traded closer to 24 and a half times. Definitely give this high-quality open-air REIT a second look. So there we have looked at three high quality REITs that have been under pressure of late. But for long-term minded investors that are patient, these look like great entry points for all of them. Down in the comments section below, let me know which of these three REITs you are most comfortable with buying right now. I would love to hear that. And also, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit that like button as I truly appreciate it and it really helps out the growth of this channel. With that being said, thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.